everyone, Richard Wong here. So before I start today's review, I want to talk about something that is slightly off topic first. Now, normally I would want to spend at least two weeks to uh, play with the product, use the product before I start writing the review. It's because with the camera gear that's getting so complicated these days, I feel I would need a minimum of two weeks before um, I can manage to learn about all the, you know, all the specs, features, get familiarized and then do some of the subjective testing and then also spend a lot of time using the product uh, like every day, almost every day in the real life situation like taking photo, video, whatever um, then I can discover more things like um, how, like if you want to use it in the real life what are the things I like or what are the minor issue or some major issue that makes me um, don't really like the product that something you know sometimes you really have to use a product a lot then you discover the things that you know is not obvious in the beginning so for today's product I have been using it um, every single day since November I think so yeah I've been using it for three months and I'm using it every day and for a very very long time and so I have pretty good uh, I feel pretty good that I know um, a lot about this product that I can share my thoughts and comments with you. And the product I'm reviewing today is the new Huawei Mate 10 Pro smartphone. And uh, just like my previous Huawei P10 smartphone review, this review will be mainly focusing on the, uh, the camera of the smartphone. It's because the camera is something that I'm most familiar with. Now let's talk about the body design first. If you have read my Huawei P10 review, you probably remember I said I don't really like the P10's design. It's just uh, quite boring, looks really like an iPhone, which I consider is a bad thing. Uh, fortunately, this time the Mate 10 Pro is a completely different story. I think the phone looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a very beautiful phone. Not only is it beautiful, but the design is also quite unique as well. The back of the phone it has the symmetrical design with all the um, the dual camera, the fingerprint sensor right at the center, and then on the left and right side you have the LED and the I think it's the AF sensor with the glass back and the thin bezel at the front. It just the whole phone looks very very elegant. I know some of you may not agree with me, but personally I think the Mate 10 Pro is the best looking smartphone from the year 2017. So the phone has a 6 inch OLED display but because of its 18 to 9 aspect ratio which seems to be the, the new standard for all the premium phone from year 2017 onwards and also the pretty thin bezel around the, um, the screen it's very easy to hold and operate the phone with only one hand and my hand is not actually that big as well so yep it's definitely a good thing that you have a big phone and you still can operate it with only one hand now let's go to the main point of this review which is the camera just like the Huawei P10 I had before um, the Mate 10 Pro also uses a dual camera setup one of the camera using a 20 megapixel uh, black and white monochrome sensor and the other one using a 12 megapixel color sensor now what is different between the Mate 10 Pro and my old P10 is that the Mate 10 Pro now has the dual f1.6 like a shimmerless H lenses on the camera. I believe this is the fastest dual lens on any smartphone at all um, in the market right now. And that should give you very good low light performance which I will talk about slightly later. Now with the faster lens, it comes with a downside and uh, I'm talking about the size of the camera and all the lens. With my P10, um, if you look at the back of the phone, um, the camera actually basically is sitting flush with the, the, the back of the phone. It doesn't extrude at all. So um, yeah, if you put finger across it, it just basically flat, nothing extrude at all. But with the Mate 10 Pro, you can see the camera extrude a little bit um, above the rear of the phone. It's not really bad. It's only about one millimeter or two millimeter extruded and the designer from Huawei, they did a pretty good job because they put a very nice shiny ring around the lenses and that makes the camera actually looks quite elegant. The autofocus speed is very fast and very accurate and even when I'm shooting under low light, the autofocus seems to work reasonably well as well. 
with the new OLED screen, uh, the color is very very nice and the brightness is also very good so uh, I have no problem if I have to use the phone to take photo on a very bright uh, sunny day with the even with the sun maybe just slightly above or behind me I can still see the screen reasonably good now also if you compare the P10 and the Mate 10 Pro you see that the P10 has the cameras at the top uh, top left corner of the back of the phone while the Mate 10 with the symmetrical design they have the camera right at the center of the phone and they have the fingerprint sensor just slightly below it so I love the fingerprint at the back a lot more than my P10 which is the front because a lot of time I have the phone in the pocket so when the time when I want to use my phone I would put my hand into my pocket so my finger would just naturally place on the fingerprint sensor um, position at the back and that would just unlock the phone immediately so by the time I uh, pull out the phone from my pocket the phone is already unlocked it and Huawei also make it so that you can use the fingerprint sensor to trigger the camera as well so when you're taking photo you can just put the uh, finger onto the fingerprint sensor and then you immediately take a photo for you so that sounds pretty good however there's a little bit of problem when I'm actually trying to use that feature because the fingerprint sensor, if you look at it, is actually quite close to the camera. So a lot of time, if I want to take a photo like this, my finger would block the camera slightly. And that means in my photo, I can see part of my finger in the, in the edge of the photo. So I don't want to use the fingerprint sensor to trigger the camera, even though it feels quite good to do that. Um, so I just using the uh, button at the side or just use tap the screen. Now even though I don't use the fingerprint sensor to trigger the camera, um, a lot of time I still place my finger somewhere around here at the back and that means my finger would still block the camera from time to time. It doesn't happen very often but it does happen uh, occasionally. So. After a while, I just tell myself when I'm taking photo, I should just put my finger somewhere just slightly away from the camera and then that's fine. So yeah, it's just take a little time for me to change the um, where I place the fingers. So yeah, I think it would be good if Huawei can move the camera slightly upwards so my finger wouldn't be blocking the camera, you know, occasionally. The camera app that comes with the Mate 10 Pro is basically the same as the one that comes with the P10. Uh, personally, I really love the Huawei camera app. It looks very nice, it's very responsive. All the company use feature are accessible from the, from the main screen. For the advanced photographers, you can easily turn on the Pro mode, which means you have full menu control on the ISO, on the shutter speed, on the exposure compensation, white balance, and some of those settings. So. If you want, you can make it into a fully manual camera or you can make it into a semi-automatic camera. For example, you just manually adjust the ISO and let the camera to adjust all the other settings for you. And if you swipe left or right um, in the camera app, then you see a lot of other settings and features for the more advanced photographers. For example, you can turn on raw output, you can um, turn on the timer mode, you can turn on the grid display or you can select one of those different shooting mode HDR, light painting mode which is one of my favorite I've actually made a separate tutorial um, showing you how to shoot some beautiful long exposure photo using the light painting mode I put the link below so you can um, yeah, check it out after finishing this review so yeah there are lots of different settings and mode you can choose from the camera app However, when you compare the camera app on the Mate 10 Pro and the P10, they are virtually the same. I think I only noticed one or two uh, difference between the two. I think it'd be good if Huawei just keep on developing the camera app and keep adding new features. For example, I think it'd be good if they can add the double exposure or multiple exposure mode to the camera app so uh, that will allow user to shoot some double exposure photo using the camera easily that would be a very fun feature and I think a lot of photographers would love it so Huawei is one of the first manufacturer to put dual camera onto their smartphone so with the dual camera then it comes with the portrait mode um, or the wide aperture mode I think the first Huawei smartphone that has this feature was the P9 from two or maybe even three years ago 
and with the Mate 10 Pro, this um, computer generated shadow depth of field effect uh, looks very nice. So the separation of the main subject with its background is uh, reasonably accurate and without too many artifacts most of the time. It's not 100% perfect, but um, I don't think any smartphone in the market right now can do it 100% perfect neither. So a little tips if you want to take some very nice shallow depth of field photo using the Mate 10 Pro is um, choose a background that looks quite different in terms of color and the pattern from your main subject. Then this would allow the phone to work out the separation of the subject a lot better and a lot more accurate. So while I really like the Huawei camera app, unfortunately some of the bug or limitation that I noticed when I was using the P10 is still there with the Mate 10 Pro. For example, if you turn the camera into a fully many mode, you turn on the Pro mode and you play with the shutter speed and ISO yourself, when you um, decrease the shutter speed, it should uh, make the screen, the preview, become brighter and brighter. But I notice once you go past, I think around 110 or 18 second, then the preview doesn't go any brighter. Even if you keep slowing down the shutter speed, for example, even if you do a 30 second exposure, the preview will look exactly the same as if you were doing, say, a 110 second. So this is not a huge issue because the end results still look correctly exposed, it only affects you when you drop the shutter speed to very very, very slow. Uh, but still, I hope Huawei can um, fix some of the bugs in the future firmware update. Now one of the big selling points with all the recent Huawei premium smartphone is that it has a monochrome sensor in addition to the color sensor. And this is something that as far as I'm aware only Huawei is doing it. Um, if I forgot some brand, please leave a comment below and let me know about it. And so anyway, uh, with the monochrome sensor, it means when you are shooting in the monochrome mode, then you are actually using the monochrome sensor to capture a true black and white photo instead of the color photo that is converted to uh, black and white. So this is quite similar to the Leica uh, monochrome M cameras which has a special monochrome sensor but of course the Mate 10 Pro is a lot cheaper than a Leica monochrome M camera. So the black and white photo from the Mate 10 Pro is just beautiful and I have been taking a lot of black and white photo using the Mate 10 Pro because of this reason. However, when you are shooting in the black and white mode, you can't turn on the raw output and also it doesn't have any color profile that you can choose when you are shooting in the black and white mode. By color profile, I mean more like a, a contrast profile. Like for example, if you want to increase the, the contrast uh, of your black and white photo, it would be really good if Huawei can keep developing the monocle and um, give user more adjustability and uh, more option when you are shooting black and white because this is a key selling feature for the uh, Mate 10 Pro and also other Huawei premium smartphones. Diamond range is really good for a smartphone and the JPEG colors are beautiful. Lens flare is reasonably well controlled but if you are shooting directly into the sun then sometimes you will see a bit of lens flare, sometimes you may see a little blue dot on the photo. Having said that, I don't think the lens flare performance is any worse than other premium smartphones in the market. So while I said the JPEG image has beautiful color, but if you want the best image quality, it's best to shoot in raw mode and then convert to JPEG yourself. The reason I said that is because I noticed the camera seems to apply quite a strong noise reduction and then over sharpen the output JPEG a little bit. But yeah, this is not really unique to the Mate 10 Pro. I compare the photos from the iPhone 10 and the Samsung Galaxy S8, they all have the similar issue, quite strong noise reduction and then uh, over sharpen. I guess this is because most of the consumer, they prefer to have the noise free and then the sharp image output and they think this is a good looking photo. So, but for people like me, I really don't mind having a little bit of noise as long as I can keep the uh, more minor, finer details in the photo. And I definitely don't want to over sharpen my photo because it looks doesn't actually doesn't look good to me. 
So yeah, if you want the best image quality, definitely shoot in RAW and then convert to JPEG yourself because not only you can control the noise reduction and the sharpening, and you also have better dynamic range control so you can recover highlight or shadow a lot more than when you are shooting in JPEG only. Now I also shoot a series of photos to test the ISO performance of the Mate 10 Pro camera. I would say from base ISO, which is ISO 50 all the way up to ISO 800, the image quality still look very decent. Uh, even in the JPEG file, it still managed to keep um, a lot of small details with good contrast and not too much noise. If you shoot in RAW, I say you can go up to ISO 1600 and you still have pretty good image quality. Now if you go to the maximum ISO which is ISO 3200 then you definitely can see the image quality will drop quite a bit. Uh, there are a lot of noise, there are some false color, contrast also drop quite a bit. Now unlike an interchangeable lens camera, I mean like a DSR or mirrorless camera, for a camera with a fixed lens like all the camera on the smartphone, ISO is only half a story when you talking about the low light performance because the other half of the equation is your camera lens. With a larger aperture lens, you can shoot at lower ISO than other cameras and that means the camera with the larger aperture will have better low light performance even if the camera have an identical image sensor. And that's exactly what the dual f1.6 lens on the Mate 10 Pro is for. It will allow the Mate 10 Pro to shoot at much lower ISO than the other smartphone camera in the market. Now I did another test to test the image quality of the Mate 10 Pro. So I shot a number of photos with the Mate 10 Pro iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 next to each other and shooting basically the same thing. Now because a lot of people that are using the smartphone to take photos, they would just use it as a point and shoot camera. They wouldn't adjust any settings and they definitely wouldn't shoot in the raw mode. So what I did is for each of the camera, I basically just point the target and I just click the shutter button. And I just let the camera to adjust all the settings for me. I didn't even tap on the area that I want to focus on. So basically I just point the camera to my target and I just click the shutter button. I didn't approve any of setting, I didn't enable the raw output, I didn't even tap on the object that I want to focus on. I just let the camera to adjust all the settings for me and then I just compare the output photos. Now for the first set of comparison photo, I took it on a bright sunny afternoon. Now here are the three photos I took using the Mate 10 Pro and the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. Looking at them side by side, honestly, I would say there's a little bit of difference in terms of the exposure and color. I can't really say which photo has the better exposure. Um, I would say the image quality from the free phone are very similar for this set of comparison photos. So for the next set of comparison photos, I shot them at a much, much darker uh, indoor area. As you can see, the white balance is quite different between the three cameras. I would say the best white balance would be somewhere between the Huawei Mate 10 Pro and the iPhone. But having said that, I think they are all reasonably good because it's quite hard to get very good white balance when you are shooting under very low light area. Now if you zoom in the photos, then you will see there is quite a bit of difference in terms of the image quality. I would definitely say the picture from the Mate 10 Pro has much better image quality than both the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8. A lot of small details are retained in the Mate 10 Pro photo. If you look at the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 photo, you can see the camera has applied a much stronger uh, noise reduction to the photos. And because of that, all the small details are completely destroyed. And the photos look a little bit like a watercolor painting. So definitely the Mate 10 Pro has the best performance when you are shooting under low light. With the Kirin 970 chipset on the Mate 10 Pro, it has a dedicated AI chip on it as well. So um, Huawei is using the AI chip to do many different tasks. For example, the phone will study your usage pattern and um, adjust the settings to give you the best performance. And when you're taking photos, the camera can then analyze what sort of scene are you are setting. And once it recognizes what sort of scene you're shooting, it will automatically adjust all the camera settings to give you the best looking photo output. And the scene recognition happens very fast. I noticed that almost immediately after I pawned my camera to a particular object, 
um, and within probably half a second and most one second I will see a little icon on the side of the camera app which tell you for example it recognizes you are shooting a dog and a cat sometimes I don't really see what has been changed once the camera recognizes what sort of thing you are shooting but sometimes I do see there's quite a bit of difference once the camera recognizes what sort of thing you are shooting so the Mate 10 Pro can shoot 1080p video and also 4K video. When you turn the camera app into video mode, then you immediately notice that a lot of settings cannot now be adjusted when you are shooting video. Basically, when you are shooting video, um, you are just shooting in completely automatic mode. The video quality is okay, but it seems like Huawei actually didn't spend too much effort in the video mode. Um, the video feature and the video quality are both slightly lacking behind when you compare to some of its competitors. Now, one main problem when you are using your smartphone's camera as your main camera, especially when you want to take a lot of photos and video, is the battery life. I remember when I was on holiday with the P10, I used the P10 to take a lot of photos and video. I would be very lucky if the battery managed to last till midday because of the amount of photos I took, it basically killed the battery very very quickly. Now with the Mate 10 Pro, this is not a problem at all. The Mate 10 Pro has a 4000 mAh battery, that's a huge battery and the battery life definitely is a lot better than my P10. So even when I'm taking a lot of photos and videos and then using the phone a lot, the battery on the Mate 10 Pro can last one full day easily. So in my P10 review, I said it would be amazing if the P10 is waterproof because then I don't have to worry about water when I'm using the phone to take photos. And now the Mate 10 Pro is finally a waterproof smartphone. It has the IP67 waterproof rating the rating may not be as good as some of its competitors, but still you shouldn't have to worry about when you want to use the phone near water or even put it completely under water. So there are two things I feel a bit disappointed about the Mate 10 Pro. The first one is that it doesn't have the micro SD card slot and the second thing is it doesn't have the uh, headphone jack anymore. So the funny thing is, the normal Mate 10, not the Mate 10 Pro, actually has both of these features. So if you really want the headphone jet and you want to have the micro SD card slot, then maybe consider the Mate 10 instead of the Mate 10 Pro. But one big difference between the Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro is that the Mate 10 is not waterproof. So yeah, it's, if you don't mind not waterproof, then definitely consider the Mate 10 if you want the headphone jet and the micro SD card slot. So after using the Huawei P10, I have very high expectation on the Mate 10 Pro. And fortunately, Huawei didn't disappoint me at all. So while the video mode is definitely not cast leading and there are a couple of things that I feel Huawei can spend more time and effort to improve, for example, the black and white mode that they can um, make it even better. But overall, there are not many things that I can complain about the Mate 10 Pro and there are so many things that I love about this phone. And after using the P10 and now the Mate 10 Pro, uh, it's not hard to see why Huawei is now one of the top 3 smartphone manufacturers in the world. So this is the end of my Huawei Mate 10 Pro review. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and I will see you next time.